let's talk about any value. I want to stress this is not any data, a special data type for generic data, which has been around since ooh, probably Oracle 8.0 days, somewhere around there. Any value is a new aggregation function. The reason I thought I'd put it in there is because I saw this nice little Twitter exchange. Jeff Smith, one of the SQL Dev product manager, tweeted out that he'd seen this new function called any value, um, saying it's available you know, in recent releases of the Oracle database. Interestingly, what is any value designed to do? It's really meant to be an efficient form of, I suppose, writing more self-documenting code. I don't want to reinvent the wheel because a good friend, Oren, did a nice write-up of this on his own blog. So please like and subscribe, so to speak, to our Oren's blog. He writes some fantastic content up there. What is the motivation for any value? Why have a function called any value? What does it do? And I'm just going to repeat a little bit of Oren's stuff, and then we're going to go off on a bit of a tangent to explore something. So this is I'm going to replicate the tables, roughly speaking, that Oren had on his blog post, just so we can set the scene for what I'm going to explore and also as a way of giving some kudos to Oren for a fantastic set of demos. So I've got a table called countries, underneath countries, cities. You can see it's got a foreign key back to the countries table. And I'm going to populate it. I actually went out to Wikipedia and found the definitive list of countries and cities. And so, yeah, we've got 224 countries and 26,500 or so cities are populated there with a nice little anonymous block. We can look at some sample data. I just picked the first random 10 cities. It's got some interesting stuff about latitude and longitude, and there's the first 10 countries. The key thing here, as I probably should have put it on this table, is it's this two-byte country code that is the foreign key that, that maps from the cities back to the country. So this is a unique constraint here. So if I want to get the count of cities per country, it's a nice simple join and a group by. Country code, count star, join the two together, and we're done. I've just picked out the first 10 countries as opposed to all 224. But what if I want the name of that country as well? Well, I can put in the country name and I get the uh, similar result. I get now the country code and the country name. And that works fine because I have that unique constraint on country code. But sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're loading in data to, to be staged in, to be corrected, and sometimes adding additional columns and adding it to the group by actually breaks the result. We might get duplicates, etc. That's the, the joy of invalid data from time to time. So sometimes we do these kind of approaches. In fact, this is probably the most common one we see is to sort of reinforce what we're actually doing. We're actually only grouping by the country code. We just want to bring along the country name effectively along for the ride, so to speak. We might do an aggregation on the country name as well. It doesn't really matter which one we pick. We could choose min, we could choose max. I would probably choose average because <laughs> that's not going to work. But min and max, just to sort of elucidate within the code that it's actually the country code that is the thing we're grouping on. And this is just extra information we're bringing along. And that's where the any value function comes in. It's probably a cleaner and more elegant way of expressing that same intent. I'm grouping by this country code. You can pick up any value for country name. You don't have to min, you don't have to max it. It's just grab any of the values that's going to be suitable for the particular country code of note. So for AD, I can pick up the first value I find, any value will do, and that gets dragged along for the ride. In theory, that should be a better option because A, it helps explain directly what the code is doing. And also, you would imagine intuitively that if I don't have to track things in terms of min and max, and I don't have to add country name to the group by, like the previous example, then in theory, this should be a better option, not just better documentation, but it should be easier for the database to handle. So that's the any value. If you don't like any value, you can go back to sort of your first principles and actually do with an inline view, go and get the country code just by the count of cities, and then do a join back to countries and bring in the country name there. This was basically the majority of Oren's blog post. It went through some of these options, etc. Right? And so this is all fantastic content. I'm a big fan of this stuff. Let's now explore this a little bit further. I've got a table called customer transactions, just the one table now, but it's the same kind of concept. Rather than a country code, I've got a customer ID and a customer name and lots of transactions. So a certain number of customer IDs, each one has many, many transactions. In fact, I've got 50 million rows in this table. That's why it's previously created. I didn't want to have you spare you the pain of watching me create it. So this is pre any value. If I wanted to bring along the customer name for the ride, I would do a min on the customer name. It takes about 4.5 seconds. So now I'll use any value, which obviously doesn't have to do the min, doesn't have to do anything like that. It just grabs any old random one. 
And yeah, it runs slower. Not so flash. That's an interesting thing. This is a repeatable test. Now, rather than subject you to waiting and waiting and waiting, you can see the vertical lines here at the start. This is a test I ran before this session and just took the output so I didn't have to bore you to tears while we waited. So rather than 50 million, I bumped it up to 100 million. Now when I ran it, this is the same script, but actually just cut and paste of the output. It went from four seconds to about 12 and a half seconds, and the end value went to about 15 or just under 16. So it's interesting, like when it went from four to six seconds, you'd, it almost seems like, oh, it's 50% slower. But as the volume got larger, it seems to sort of keep that, that sort of three second overhead. So it didn't seem to be, you know, be 50%. It was just a little bit slower, but it was indeed slower. Then I took it out to 400 million rows and ran them through again. Same thing. This time it took 58 seconds to do the min, and it took another four seconds this time to do the any value. To be honest, I was disappointed. I was saddened to see this because I, you know, I, of course, you can imagine was preparing these demos to sort of, you know, swing my champagne glass and say, look how cool any value is in terms of performance. But unfortunately, it does seem to be just a little bit slower than the existing aggregate functions. That doesn't mean we should discount it all together. Let's go back to real world demos actually running them live. I have a table called customer trans two. Now I have a customer ID, a customer name, but also this massive string, customer details. It's a big varchar two. And because it's got a lot of stuff in there, you can see the average row length for each row on this table is about 10K. Maybe this is a better use case for something like any value. Because if I want to bring along the customer details along with the customer ID, if I'm doing a min or a max, now I'm doing a min or a max on a very, very big value because most of this 10K is in this customer details column. This is a much smaller table, but I ran this min customer details by group by customer ID. About 13 seconds, that seems abnormally slow, maybe because we're running Zoom. Then I do any value. Ah, a <laughs> tiny bit faster. Demos while Zoom wasn't running yielded normally just a, probably about 10% quicker using the any value I found is uh, using min. So maybe that's a potential use case here. When you're bringing along with your group by massive amounts of information, maybe the any value is that's where it's going to really show its true colors and then in beating perhaps min and max. Sadly, if you take that to the next level, which is customer details being, say, a TLOB with a huge amount of data, and you insert some rows in, then unfortunately any value, same with min, same with max, they just, you can't do an aggregation on a TLOB. So I was sort of, I would have been nice if any value gave us that breakthrough as well, but unfortunately not. I suppose the best way of wrapping up that is give it some time. Any value is new to 19C, and when I've been new, it actually was targeted for 21C and got backported to 19C in one of the early releases. That's why I think you might, you might not, not find it in the original version of the 19C docs. I think it's in there in the, the later versions of the documentation as they get updated. But yeah, it's a brand new function, and obviously it offers the scope for getting these benefits. But as of now, it's about the same, perhaps a touch slower than the existing techniques we used to use. Mm -hmm.